Welcome to the Maternity Mentor. Today we will be talking about the COVID-19 vaccine for pregnant and lactating mothers, why you should or should not consider getting the vaccine, and what to expect if you receive one. Stay with us. Hi, I'm Samantha. I've been a registered nurse since 2009, working in mother-baby postpartum, NICU, antepartum, and labor and delivery. I'm also an IBCLC. I'm maternal newborn nursing certified, and I've received training in perinatal mood and anxiety disorders, as well as perinatal bereavement. The development of a COVID-19 vaccine has been a subject that millions of people have been following. Now the vaccine is here, and it's created a lot of anxiety and questions. For pregnant and breastfeeding women, this is amplified as decisions need to be made that could affect their babies. This video will explain what the COVID-19 vaccine is and things you need to know to help you decide whether or not to receive one. As a frontline healthcare worker, I chose to receive the vaccine. I can say my experience has been positive and I've only had one side effect, a sore arm. This was not a decision I took lightly. I spent time thinking, reading, attending webinars, and discussing the decision with my family before t deciding to take the vaccine. I encourage this for all my viewers. As we explore this topic, it's important to remember that this is an individual decision. As our fellow family, friends, co-workers, and neighbors decide whether or not to receive the vaccine, we must support their decision wholeheartedly. I support your decision no matter what. Let's talk about the COVID-19 vaccine. Many companies have been working on COVID-19 vaccines throughout 2020. As of the posting of this video, two vaccines have been approved for use in the United States. On December 11th, the FDA authorized the Pfizer-BioNTech COVID-19 vaccine for emergency use. On December 18th, they did the same for the Moderna COVID-19 vaccine. The Pfizer vaccine has been shown to be 95% effective, and the Moderna vaccine is 94.1% effective. Both vaccines will require a recipient to get two doses to be effective. The Pfizer vaccine can be given to people ages 16 and older. After you get the first vaccine, you will receive the second vaccine three weeks or 21 days later. The Moderna vaccine has been approved for people ages 18 and older. After you get the first vaccine, you will receive the second vaccine four weeks or 28 days later. Both vaccines should be from the same manufacturer. So, if Pfizer is the first one you receive, Pfizer should be the second one you receive. Both vaccines are mRNA vaccines. mRNA stands for messenger RNA. These vaccines contain no live virus and you will not contract COVID-19 if you receive the vaccine. The vaccine stimulates the immune system to make antibodies that destroy COVID-19 when it is detected by the body. The vaccines completed all the required trials for approval Additional trials and studies are ongoing and data continues to be collected. Available data up to this point has shown that symptomatic pregnant women with COVID-19 are at increased risk for severe illness as compared to non-pregnant women. The Centers for Disease Control or CDC has now included pregnancy as a factor leading to severe disease based on this data. However, the risk of severe COVID-19 infection remains low in pregnant women. Severe illness leads to an increased risk of ICU admission, mechanical ventilation, and extracorporeal membrane oxygenation or ECMO ventilatory support. Unfortunately, for symptomatic pregnant women with severe COVID-19 illness, the risk of death is also increased. Pregnant women who've been identified with COVID-19 comorbid conditions may have an even higher risk of severe illness. This risk is similar to those in the general population who also have comorbidities. Comorbidities for COVID-19 include cancer, 
Obesity, which is defined as a BMI above 30 but less than 40. Severe obesity, which is defined as a BMI above 40. Diabetes, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease or COPD. Heart conditions, chronic kidney disease, smoking, an immunocompromised state, and sickle cell disease. Asian, Pacific Islander, and Native American pregnant women have an increased risk of ICU admission with COVID-19 infection. Hispanic and Black women have disproportionately increased rates of COVID-19 infection and death as compared with other groups. Pregnant women with COVID-19 infection are at increased risk of adverse pregnancy outcomes, which can include preterm birth. Important considerations to think about when deciding to get the COVID-19 vaccine include the efficacy of the vaccine, the level of disease in the community, the potential risk and severity of disease to the mother, the effects of the disease on the fetus, the effects of the disease on the newborn, risks of not getting vaccinated, evaluation of exposure risk in the home and at work, evaluation of exposing high-risk household members, and the safety of the vaccine for both mother and fetus. The long-term effects of the COVID-19 infection, including mild infections, are just starting to be understood. COVID-19 infection symptoms may last for months and have been shown to attack different organs, including the heart, lungs, kidneys, and brain. For example, some patients with mild COVID-19 infection have been shown to have lasting damage to the heart muscle. A conversation with your healthcare provider can help you determine the risks and benefits of receiving the vaccine. Finally, women and their partners should consider the benefit of getting vaccinated for the whole household. Getting vaccinated against a disease reduces the chance of bringing that disease into the house. For example, currently babies and children are not eligible to receive the vaccine. Getting vaccinated can reduce their chance of exposure to COVID-19. Safety data about the COVID-19 vaccine is currently limited in pregnant and lactating women. This is because pregnant women and lactating women were not included in the studies of the COVID-19 vaccines. This follows the U.S. Food and Drug Administration guidelines for vaccine development. Before pregnant and lactating women can be included in the study of vaccines, DART studies or animal developmental and reproductive toxicity studies must be completed. These studies are currently being conducted and will hopefully be completed soon. So far, no major safety issues have been identified or raised. A few participants in the current studies got pregnant during the clinical trials, so additional data is being collected on e these individuals as well. Once the data has been analyzed from these results, studies will be planned for vaccines that include pregnant and lactating women. mRNA vaccines should be safe for pregnant and lactating women because they do not enter the nucleus of a cell and therefore they do not interact with genetic material. Additionally, mRNA is broken down very quickly by cells. However, potential risks remain unknown because studies have not been completed yet. The vaccine data sheets for both Pfizer and the Moderna vaccines note that there is insufficient data to inform vaccine-associated risks in pregnancy. Before we continue, please remember to hit the like button and subscribe so you can get our latest content to have a happy and healthy family. Now let's talk about side effects of the COVID-19 vaccine. If you decide to get vaccinated, it's important that you are counseled on the side effects of the vaccine. Side effects are normal for any vaccine. They are simply a response by the body as the immune system responds to the vaccine and begins developing antibodies. For both the Moderna and Pfizer vaccines, some participants reported mild side effects after receiving the vaccine. Fever is one reported side effect of the vaccines and is defined as 38 degrees Celsius or 100.4 degrees Fahrenheit or higher. For the Moderna vaccine, less than 1% of people reported a fever after the first dose and 15.6% reported a fever after the second vaccine dose.
For the Pfizer vaccine, reports of fever were 3.7% with the first dose and 15.8% with the second dose. Fatigue was reported by 68.5% of recipients of the Moderna vaccine and 62.9% of the Pfizer vaccine. Headaches were reported by 63% of recipients of the Moderna vaccine and 55.1% of the Pfizer vaccine. Chills were reported by 43.4% of recipients of the Moderna vaccine and 31.9% of the Pfizer vaccine. Muscle pain was reported by 59.6% of the recipients of the Moderna vaccine and 38.3% of the Pfizer vaccine. Joint pain was reported by 44.8% of the recipients of the Moderna vaccine and 23.6% of the Pfizer vaccine. Injection site reactions were the most reported side effects. These reactions can include redness, warmth, pain, swelling, itching, and more. Injection site reactions were reported by 91.6% of recipients of the Moderna vaccine and 84.1% of the Pfizer vaccine. All side effects usually resolved by day three after receiving the vaccine for both Moderna and Pfizer. If more serious side effects are experienced, you should seek immediate medical care. If a pregnant woman does receive the vaccine and develops a fever as a side effect, her healthcare provider may recommend she take Tylenol or acetaminophen because fever has been associated with adverse pregnancy outcomes. Tylenol can also be used for some of the other side effects, including injection site pain and headache. The American College of Obstetricians and Gynecologists, or ACOG, has issued a set of recommendations to help pregnant patients decide whether or not to receive the COVID-19 vaccine. ACOG recommends that pregnant individuals who meet criteria should be offered the COVID-19 vaccine. The Society of Maternal Fetal Medicine echoes this recommendation. Pregnant women should work with their healthcare providers to discuss the benefits and risks of receiving the COVID-19 vaccine. However, a conversation with a healthcare provider regarding vaccine counseling should not be required in order for a pregnant woman to receive the vaccine. Patients should feel free and supported to make the decision that is right for them. If a pregnant woman is considering getting the vaccine, she should be given the most current information regarding the safety of the vaccine that is available. This should include notifying her if no data is available. Additionally, women who choose not to receive the vaccine should have their decision supported completely. Pregnant women who have received the COVID-19 vaccine or are planning to receive it should still receive Rogam or anti-D immunoglobulin as scheduled. Rogam will not interfere with the immune system response to the COVID-19 vaccine. The COVID-19 vaccine should not be given within 14 days of another vaccine. For women planning to receive the Tdap vaccine or the flu vaccine or both during their pregnancy, you may want to seek guidance from your healthcare provider to help you plan the timing of these vaccines. For more information on the Tdap vaccine and the flu vaccine, please see our videos on this. We will link those in the description below. Women who are lactating and providing breast milk to their babies should also be allowed to receive the COVID-19 vaccine if they desire it. Once the vaccine has been received, mothers do not need to pump and dump their breast milk or stop providing their breast milk to their babies. For mothers who are starting to provide breast milk, there is no need to delay initiation. Providing breast milk includes direct breastfeeding and pumping breast milk for a baby. For women who are trying to get pregnant, ACOG advises a delay in becoming pregnant is not necessary. If you become pregnant after receiving the first dose of the vaccine, you should receive the second dose. Routine pregnancy testing should not be a requirement to get the vaccine. It should be noted that ACOG stresses the vaccine should be given in order of priority, with pregnancy alone not being the top priority. For example, healthcare and frontline workers are currently being offered the COVID-19 vaccine first. 
Therefore, the pregnant frontline workers should be allowed to get vaccinated if they desire per the ACOG recommendations. Pregnant women in the community will not be given priority for vaccination. Instead, they will be offered the vaccine based on their risk compared to other COVID-19 risk factors. If you go to your healthcare provider and request the COVID-19 vaccine and they decline your request, make sure to ask why. They may be denying your request simply because your risk factors don't make you eligible for the vaccine yet. Currently, there is a limited supply of the COVID-19 vaccine, and the general public will probably start being offered the vaccine in the spring of 2021. Recipients are encouraged to participate in the CDC's VSAFE program. This program includes text messages and web surveys to check in with vaccine recipients and their vaccine experiences, including side effects. Any concerning reports are followed up with a phone call from a CDC representative. Whether you receive the vaccine or not, it's important to continue to follow the CDC, WHO, and local health authority recommendations. These can include mask wearing, hand washing, social distancing, quarantine guidance, travel restrictions, and avoiding gatherings with people outside your household. The pandemic has affected all of us differently. It has brought us together as a worldwide community and given us a greater appreciation for the little things in life and what is really important. The COVID-19 vaccine is the next step in the fight to end this pandemic and get things back to normal. I hope this has given you the information you need to decide whether the COVID-19 vaccine is right for you. I support your decision no matter what. Please share your comments and let us know what topics you would like to hear more about. If you like this content, please remember to hit that like button and subscribe so you can be the first to receive this information. Remember, share this channel with your friends and family and follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter for additional content. We will link those in the description below. Thank you so much for joining us at The Maternity Mentor.